this place used to buzz. The, this was like the playing fields for the non-whites. Everyone knew one another, you used to visit, visit one another. Born in Street Fitas, those years was for us sent in city. We were forcefully removed here, they evicted us from here. Here's the thing, if they talk about how Teng is the economic hub of South Africa, then 14th Street was the economic hub of, of Fitas. If you kill 14th Street, it's obvious what was going to happen next. All our furniture and all our belongings were thrown onto the sidewalk. It was the year 1964 when the South African apartheid regime started serving eviction orders on non-white residents of Fitas, a process which would continue into the 1970s. Fitas was a business and residential area bustling with economic activity. Residents were expected to move to areas such as Lanasia, Bosmont, Eldorado Park and other areas on the outskirts of Johannesburg. Shop owners were expected to move to the Oriental Plaza, which was built in 1976. Despite resistance, by the 1980s, more than almost 5,000 housing units were built in Indonesia for the relocation of the Indian community. Radio Islam spoke to some members of the Indian community about their experiences and what life was like before the move. The Group Areas Act was enacted in 1952 by then the Nationalist government, they came into power I think in 1945, um, and, and at its core it is, it is an act to separate people on the basis of race. So uh, you had the white community living on their own and therefore a group area, and then even within the greater black communities, African, colored and, and Indian that made up the black communities, they were also demarcated into their own areas, right? Uh, and that at its core, it's a group areas act. The only things I understand that was, uh, that was doesn't fall into having your own spaces was, was the roads that you could drive on and the streets that you could walk on. They came to the 70s when we had this group areas act. They wanted us out there because they had plans of building the Oriental Plaza there. So we were displaced. We were forcefully thrown out there. All our furniture, equipment, everything was put onto the sidewalk. It was very difficult, very difficult. Just to cry for how many days you couldn't come this, but that we got used to it. What can you do? Yeah. Most of the Indians were sent to Lanasia, the colored community to El Dorado Park. And uh, there's nothing we could do because we were in a minority and they were determined to do what they wanted to do. So there's no ways you could fight. I mean, everybody was upset. Everybody didn't want to go from here. We lived in nice communities. We had small homes. We were maybe seven, eight, 10, 12 people living in two bedrooms, but we were happy. The special part of the Fitas community, and in this case, I must stress it, Fitas had a large African community, black African community, we kicked out to, to the Middle Lands area long before I was born. Then it had an, a, a, an Indian community, and a coloured community, so coloured Cape Malay community, right? Um, and then of course you had a white community. So all, at different times, all of them lived there. The point I want to make is the fact that many of us under this, this umbrella of black South Africans that speak fondly of some aspects of Fitas, we speak fondly of some aspects of Fitas in spite of apartheid, not because of apartheid. So one cannot romanticize and say, but you know, those were the good old days, no. There was so much that was wrong about Fitas. Fitas' existence, by its, by its very existence, was a default of apartheid. So that was wrong. Now, the plus side, in spite of the problems, the, the willingness of, and in this case, the black community, so the African, black African community had moved out long before I was born, I can't speak on their behalf. But the other communities, their ability to 
live side by side, to cohabit, to be seen as one community, I think is unparalleled now. A big part of the Fitas area was the sense of community shared by all those who lived in the area, a sentiment that is reflected upon by many. It was a very close community here. Everyone knew one another, you used to visit, visit one another. Very friendly, no fighting, nothing, that very nice, yeah. My parents were there, the Bamjis, yeah, they were thrown out from 14th Street. They had a nice big house, double story, but they were thrown out, yeah, for the group area sake. I mean, nobody really wanted to move. We were happy with a little bit we had and whatever things were happening around here, it was such a central place. But you see, the thing is, the friendship that the community had was unreal. We had coloreds, Chinese, there were white people, there were all kinds of, all nationalities living here. And we you know, we all lived like one happy family, believe it or not. If there was anything that happened at anybody's home, if there was an incident or a funeral or something, the whole community would come to your house. Up till now, our hearts are still sore of what actually transpired way back. But it's unfortunately, they say, life goes on and we got to move on. We never, in Fitas, we never used to go to the malls. There was no malls in Fitas. That's the only check, we used to go to Checkers. Checkers was there in Fordsburg. That we used to buy from the ordinary shop, whatever you and we used to buy from 17th Street Nagin. He was the best known for Indian groceries and everything. My best memory in Fitas, like how we were growing up with the children and then struggling very hard to make ends mean. It was very tough to send the children to school, Madrasa. That time the school fee, Madrasa fee was not that much, but it was very, the people of Fitas, they know. I used to sell from the house chips, popcorn, Toffee apples, peanuts, rent wasn't that expensive like rents now, but it was very tough. Then so Allah's kudrat, Allah pak help, Rafur Rahim helped me to come up to this stage. We never, nobody borrowed nothing. We never asked anybody for help. Allah was there to help me all, all the way. Fitas big family was the biggest family, it was Bamji's. Bamji was the biggest family. Then there was a lot of families around that we know. Dokrats, Valleys, all. Gardas, there was a lot of family in Fitas we knew. Yeah. But as it is, and soon they had to move out. There is some other people still left behind in Fitas from those days. They're still staying there. Solis Corner is in Fordsburg, where the near school, the children used to go and buy chips there all. That was Solis Corner because my son, son, they used to attend the school in Fordsburg, they used to go and buy by Solis Corner, the chips, fish and chips, yeah. We were far from Solis Corner because we are in Fitas. Fitas, I was between Delary, Delary Street and the, and the cemetery, the white cemetery, just there in the corner. We had no lucky shop in the corner. We had cafes, we had a few cafes there, cold drink and everything we can get from there. That's how it is, that's how we lived. But we were very happy there. We were very happy there. Government decided, uh, probably around the early 70s, that the, that the traders um, of, of many of the communities of, of Greater Johannesburg uh, in white areas had to move out of those areas and most of those traders were Indian or Asian traders they had to move out of those areas and then all be put together in one big shopping mall called the Oriental Plaza, right? Regarding the economic move to the Oriental Plaza and the residential move to areas such as Lanasia and Bosmont, it's understood that the apartheid government was attempting to break the economic hub of the non-white community living in Johannesburg. As far as, as Fitas is concerned, 
the 14th Street Fitters, uh, ah goodness, 14th Street Fitters those years was for us Santon City. Those traders and their stores, they ran bustling businesses in spite of, you know, the being set up to fail, okay? But then government decided on a whim, as they would obviously do to say, no, they had to be relocated. So from 14th Street Fitas, with a very successful business area hub, to the Oriental Plaza in Fordsburg, what, probably three kilometers away. The main business street in Friedendorf was 14th Street where all our Indian guys had their clothing shops and all types of businesses. But over the years, when they put them out there and moved them to the Oriental Plaza, Fitas became, you know, it, it, it actually it wasn't there anymore. But lately I see lots of guys are moving back in there. And uh, actually, if you look at Fitas, it's more like a slum now. Because you know what, if you see what's going on there, there's drug racketing going on. And uh, it's not a nice place to go to anymore. Although the memories are there, but if you go there now, it will actually make your heart sore. And, and the greater design wasn't just the Oriental Plaza. It was obvious, if you kill 14th Street, the, the, the economic hub of, well, I mean, here's the thing. If they talk about Gauteng as the economic hub of South Africa, then 14th Street was the economic hub of, of Fitas. If you kill 14th Street, it's obvious what was going to happen next that Fitas was going to be killed. And as we're well aware of, you know, Fitas died eventually. And the next step, as we know, the, the people of Asian origin or Indian origin had to move to, to Lanasia. But that was not all. We know that. The people of, of Malay origin or, and, and colored communities had to move to places like El Dorado Park, Bosmont, Nuclear, uh, Rivoli. So in fact, that entire community died. Before that, the, the African, black African community already got kicked out to Soweto. And ironically, and this is interesting, the white community of Fritas were totally dependent on the black communities of Fritas for their existence. So when the government kicked out the black communities from Fritas to kill off Fritas, in effect, they also killed off the white community that lived in Fritas. I mean, nobody wanted to go. Let's, let's get that right. Nobody wanted to go to the Oriental Plaza because, well, why would they want to go when this is your home? You've been forced to move out. In the same way, nobody wanted to move to Lanasia. Whether the homes were bigger, because they were bigger. Whether they were smarter, they were smarter. Whether you now had a garden, because you never had any fitas, it's true. It doesn't mean that you wanted to go. There's a sense of heritage that people hold on to, that this is, my, this is where I'm born, and if I want to move somewhere, then it's my choice. I think the bottom line to moving to Lanasia was, it was never your choice. I mean, nobody really wanted to move. We were happy with a little bit we had. And whatever things were happening around here, it was such a central place. But you see, the thing is, the friendship that the community had was unreal. Like I said, we were like one unit. And they were all upset. I mean, they were like forced, we were forcefully removed from here. We were evicted from our homes. We had close communities, we had the masjid around the corner here where we could, you know, could perform our prayers. And uh, it was, like I said, one happy family. I mean, look, up till now, our hearts are still sore of what actually transpired way back. But it's unfortunately, they say, life goes on and we got to move on. Look, there are people now that have moved out here almost 45, 50 years in Indonesia people that we knew, there's still some of the old people that are alive. But they will tell you always that the memories they had in Forsberg and Friedelop, they will, you know what, we may die, but those memories will never ever die. Following the move of the Indian community to Lanasia, a sense of community was brewing in that area. The Indian population formed their own sense of brotherhood through replicating what made the Fitas community so special. The Indian community made Lanasia, you know, its home, A, by living there, B, by, by, by setting up the type of communal infrastructure that was already evident in Fitas. So they, they simply, I think, largely copied that what put the community together in Fitas. You know, the, the, the sense of commun communalism, coming together, supporting each other, um, uh, setting up the right type of schools that were needed, um, besides government schools. 
but then ensuring the children are educated, studying the right way, uh, setting up religious institutes, setting up welfare organizations, NGOs, all emerged in Indonesia after being kicked out of places like Fitas. I think people, is, they've adapted to Indonesia. There's lots of people that say they wouldn't move out of Indonesia anymore because they've also maybe formed their own communities. They've got shopping centers there. Everything is available in Indonesia. So there are lots of people that don't want to come back here now. I suppose it's, it's been 30, 40 and 50 years that people have moved to Indonesia. So they made a home of it. Now they used to Ladish. They used to Ladish now. Now they say that let, let's go to stay in town again because the madrasas are here, the schools are here, and then, then, then they say now they grown up and all the children went to school here. They educated here. So what can we say? Allah knows the best. If you want us to move there, but my age, I don't think I want to move now. Upon reflection of the FITAS community's closeness, figures like Ashraf Garda believe that perspective needs to be maintained when reminiscing about life way back then. People who move now to, to different communities have thrived in spite of the intentions of government to, to break them, and they haven't broken them, right? But on the other hand, the group is act by its nature, is wrong, it's, it's haram, there's no justification anywhere in the world for that, right? Um, and the Separate Amenities Act. And, and FITAS was put there because of the Group Areas Act and then divided and broken and destroyed uh, because of the Group Areas Act. So the point is, is the fact that we, we had certain moments of great pleasure um, and resilience and thriving in areas like FITAS doesn't make the Group Areas Act that lumped us all together as a good act. It is wrong and can never be defended. And therefore, I have a huge problem when people say the good old days. And I'll repeat that point. There were aspects of FITAS that were great in spite of the forces of evil acting against it. But to simply whitewash and say that was the good old days period would be an incorrect narrative of our, of our history, uh, not just for, for the Indians that lived in FITAS, but the African people that lived in FITAS for the colored people, for the Malay community, all of them bore the brunt of, of oppression uh, by the apartheid government at that time.